as I said, what's really important is make sure you obtain those business objectives. Um, keep on asking that question, what do your, what, of your stakeholders, what, they, what do they want delegates to learn from the event? Um, what do they want to, them to do as a result of those learnings? How will the company benefit or the organization benefit? Um, and is it possible to measure this financially? And interrogate them until you get the answers. Keep on asking those questions. Nobody will knock you for asking what the event is there to do, what the actual objectives are that people want to achieve from them. And they'll be actually quite pleasantly surprised that you're going into that level of conversation um, with them. So what I wanted to also to get across today, and um, I'm going to share something else with you, that it's not just about the money. We've talked quite a lot about return on investment, but I also want you not to forget return on objectives. But let's also think about events from um, another perspective as well. Now, we as a company like um, to work something that we call triple impact, which is our sort of expression, I suppose, of best uh, practice for events that, on the one hand, deliver, as we've just discussed, a commercial impact, return on investment, return on objectives, but also looking to um, plan events to, to minimize the environmental impact and also to deliver a social impact. So just a couple of quick examples of those. Um, we were given a, an opportunity to work for DEFRA to run some road shows um, carried out amongst the UK public to do with climate change. Uh, and those culminated in a summit where David Miliband, who was then the Environment Minister, was speaking. So when we had to plan that summit, we had to go into the nth degree of every single detail you could imagine to make sure that we planned the event to minimize the, um, the carbon footprint. So for example, the stage set was all made with screws, not nails. Any aspect of carpeting that was put on the stage had to have a home to go to afterwards before it could be used. Any furniture, um, any printed materials, we had to weigh up whether it was cheaper to and more environmentally friendly um, to actually have them produced locally versus having environmental uh, versions produced 100 miles away that then had to be transported in. Uh, we had to make sure all the technical equipment was on standby. Um, sorry, it was either on or off, but not on standby, um, and really looking at every single aspect to make sure that it delivered on that front. Now, we ended up by producing a green guide that we've now developed and honed and, and updated uh, since then, um, but it gave us something, I think, to work to in terms of actually managing events um, on that front. And then the other thing that we felt was it's really important to try and put something back into the local community where you run the event, um, and that in itself can actually be very, very positive in terms of the impact you have on your delegates. So I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to show you all this film, but a very quick film of an event that we ran um, for a company in South Africa. Hey. Thank you, Noji. Thank you, Noji. Thank you, Noji. So, that event, just to sort of summarise that, what, what was happening there was that um, the company had gone for a centenary conference to South Africa. Each of the business units across the various countries they operated in had been challenged to raise funds for providing housing units to the local community close to Sun City where the event um, ran and what you saw there was them handing over some of the actual units that they had paid for and also getting into activities in terms of building bricks and um, digging foundations to make and build some um, new housing units as well. 
and people were so moved by this that um, the German delegation, for example, went away and said, this is crazy, they're making bricks by hand, we're going to raise more money to actually provide them with a mechanical brick maker. The delegates were invited to um, leave um, various belongings behind and they collected something like 70, 80 um, ref large refuse sacks of laundry, of cosmetics, personal belongings that people wanted to donate to the uh, local township. And they also asked people, said, look, if you want to, put your hand in your pocket, some loose change, and through that they raised even more funds to, to fund further um, housing units. So it really did capture the spirit and the imagination of all of those delegates. And I think to put that in financial terms is just sort of completely inappropriate because those people who were there, and we had some of our people there, they will never, ever, ever forget um, that and what took place when uh, they were on that particular event. So just some ways there to create a sort of social impact, obviously using local suppliers, um, giving cash to local good causes. If you haven't got time in your program to do anything like that, maybe what the company can do that you're running the event for, or the organization can do, is find out some good causes locally that are close to their own charity, or even their own charity might be present in that destination to put something back into the local community. Um, engage delegates and activities in the local community to the event that results in you know, benefit in terms of improvement in facilities like we saw, or amenities. Um, but also a beneficial experience to members of the local community from having experienced that. And we've got lots of examples where we've, we've, we've been able to do that. So why would you want to do it? Um, it allows companies and their employees to live and breathe their values, which again you can't put in financial terms. Um, and that emotional impact creates that lasting impression that you'll never, never measure financially. Um, it can also create and build very strong team working across all sorts of uh, teams and departments and geographies within an organisation but also it can be actually great, great fun as well and very rewarding, um, creating a great sense of pride and achievement. So just to sort of summarize now, I want to go back into um, the return on investment aspect. So why do we measure it? So I say it's a benchmark to other marketing activity. Um, it's the means to justify event expenditure above and beyond other forms of marketing communications activity. It's the means for stakeholders to be able to justify their event budgets to their internal um, uh, stakeholders, their finance directors, their CEOs, their boards, um, their advisory boards, whoever, that the event is there and has a reason, has a place, and the budgets are needing to be put behind it to make sure the event can deliver those return on objectives and that return on investment. If we can do that, that should encourage greater expenditure um, on events, and that is in everybody's interest for that to be the case. And also, if we plan, as we said, to measure return on investment or plan the event to deliver return on investment, then we'll all work harder and the planning aspect of it will make sure that event really does deliver. But as I say, don't forget in all of the commercial side of things, the benefits you can also deliver from an environmental um, and social aspect of the event too. So that really um, is it from me. Um, thank you very much indeed for um, listening. Thank you very much.